Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Coach's Desk. I'm your host, Coach Minzy, and we have a very special guest with us this time around. Uh, that is a reggae girl. I know you have been waiting quite a long time for this to happen, people. Um, however, nothing beats the right time. We believe in the right timing. So we have the wonderful reggae girl, Alika Keen, who will be joining us at this moment, and we'll be having a talk. Put your hands together and welcome Alika Keen. Hello. <laughs> All right, Alika, that is a uh, welcome from the coach's desk. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, Coach Minzi. How are you? I'm happy to I'm, be here. I'm well myself, and it's, it, it, it's definitely a, a pleasure to have you here on the show. You know what I mean? Yes. After you did such a tremendous job in your debut, uh, but we'll be <laughs> delving into that uh, later on. Uh, talk to us. How did you get involved in sports? Let me put it sports, and then you probably uh, tell us how football came on board as well. Sure. Well, my parents always like to tell me, I'm an only child, that uh, when I was younger, I had too much energy and they needed to expel some of that before I came home because, you know, they were working and then you have this kid always running around and wanting to do something. So at age four, they put me in football and that was my first love, my first sport. And I think I took on piano because I do some music as well and then softball around age six and by 11 or 12 they were like we're driving everywhere for you you need to pick one sport and without a question it was it was football so i stayed with that oh so it was a no-brainer that you chose football no brainer uh, no what drew you to it though uh, um, out of all the other sports you know i think just comparing it to softball actually when i was younger i wanted to play american football i was a huge lover of of being a wide receiver, I, I wanted to play badly. And, you know, my parents were like, it's dangerous. You know, they didn't really have options when I was a kid. But I think if I were a boy, I probably would have wanted to play American football. But I'm, I'm happy that obviously I stuck with soccer, football, because it, there's just so much freedom. There's so much creativity that goes into it. And there aren't, aren't any limits, you know. So I love playing the sport. And with softball, it was so stop and start stop and start so i would often get a little bored but i did love stealing bases that was my my forte when i played softball mm -hmm. so, yeah football i just it was fun i always smiled when i played and i took it seriously but at the same time i just had so much freedom and i loved the unity of a team sport you know working together to take down giants and just up do upsets and all of that stuff i i always had a good time with football so. okay awesome uh backtrack a little bit tell us about life growing up were you uh did you grow up in jamaica or overseas you left earlier talk, talk to us about that aspect so my mom moved uh from jamaica to new york around like 17 or 18 years old so and that's where she met my father and i was born in the u.s so uh my dad is a marine so I was born um, in North Carolina in that area and then moved to Florida like a year or two later. So I've always been like a sun baby, you know, always out in the sun, always playing um, outside. And my childhood was very much like, school focused. And then when I'm done with my homework or any schoolwork, I'm outside until the streetlights come on and then I'm back inside and hanging out with my family. So. Yeah, growing up, I, I really had a blessed childhood. I was always outside. Always, there was a lot of love in the family. And I just, I really enjoyed okay. myself. Yeah. So, so, so were you engulfing the Jamaican culture at all? I wasn't, you know. Um, so, where I lived in Florida, much of my father's side of the family lived in that part as well. So I was more, my father's actually Panamanian, which was... Interesting when Jamaica played Panama Reggae Girls uh, a few years back for the World Cup qualifier. I was like, I've got my two <laughs> my two families going at it. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, but yeah, I, I've been more engrossed in the Panamanian side of the family just because I have more family members around me from Panama. So much of the Jamaican side is just 
you know, we would go to Jamaican stores and have patties and, and have like, you know, Kalaloo, all of that Jamaican food. But as far as visiting Jamaica, I feel like I didn't have a deep connection with that side because I hadn't been exposed to it, if that makes sense. And I always wanted it, it just, it didn't, the opportunity didn't present itself when I was younger, so. Okay, cool. All right, well said. In terms of the connection now, we know that you are connected to us, but in terms yes. of who made that initial connection uh, for you to come oh. and play for the reggae girls? Ah, I see. Okay. I think I was maybe 15 or 16. And there's a huge Jamaican population in Florida. So at one of my games that I was playing travel ball, I think, I can't even remember. I think it was Coach Vin that initially scouted me. And, uh, you know, he came up to my mom, they spoke, and she was so excited because, you know, I would get the opportunity to play for her country. And she was like, there's this um, reggae girls, you know, youth team, you have the opportunity to go play, do you want to do it? And I said, of course, that would be amazing. So I think the first round that I played was in Costa Rica, like U17 national team. And I played with Trudy, I played with... I don't think Bunny was on the team the first time that I played. I think it was the second round that I played with her. But um, I remember it was me and one other overseas player that was also in Central Florida. And we both went and I think it was just the two of us. And it was such a, a unique experience because I don't really speak or understand Patois. <laughs> so I remember it was so difficult to try to communicate with the girls because I, I couldn't really understand <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was, it was coach Vin who initially scouted me and, uh, I had the opportunity to play at the youth level. And since then I've been with them. Yeah. Okay, great. So you'd have come up through the ranks. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's good. But in terms of the, the patois, you understand it now though. It's better. It's so, it's so <laughs> much better. I'm telling you the first time I, I felt so badly because I wanted to speak with the girls. I was so excited to, you know, be with my mom's people. I mean, it's my people too, but you know, she, she made that initial connection and I was able to kind of get to know her culture a little bit better, but man, just trying to speak with some of the girls, I was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Can you please repeat this? Because I, I couldn't understand, but now, now I'm, I'm, I'm definitely better. I'm definitely better. So. All right, cool. All right, walk us through, um, Alika, the stages of your football, possibly um, if it is middle school, high school, mm. did you go to college and play football? Walk us through all of that. Sure. Yeah, so like I said, started at four, um, was big in travel football, and then I got recruited at 17, and I went to play in university at Harvard. So I went there and played four years. And um, my senior year, actually the first time that I got called up to the senior team, so I did, I think so, I did one U17, two U20s with Coach Vin, all three of those camps. And then the senior team was my first with um, Coach Hugh and Busby. And that camp we played in, the was it the Caymans? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I actually got injured around that time. So I played my final senior season in university. Um, but it was like one week I would play and then I would have to kind of rehab that whole week and then play another like Saturday to Saturday. No trainings in between, just playing the games. And uh, it was a sort of weird like overuse injury they had said called osteitis pubis and it was something that they didn't really have a lot of research at the time and it was just managing the, my pain tolerance essentially so uh, after that season i took some time off to rest and hoped that it would get better but it didn't really go away so i ended up getting a cortisone shot and i thought well i guess that's my football career you know it's not super satisfying because you know, I like to jump into my senior season like I would have liked to in university, but I, I'm in too much pain to continue. So uh, I ended up going abroad to Peru and I ran a, a nonprofit with one of my good friends from college. Did that for a year. The cortisone shot was amazing, but you know, as cortisone shots often do, it just kind of put a band aid on the issue. It didn't heal. And I was supposed to be doing rehab that I didn't get to start because I left the country. So when I came back to the States a year later, 
it was like my body just kind of caught up with me and I, I felt the same pain, like it hadn't left. And so my dad was like, you're too young to be having this. You need to go right now and get some rehab. And so okay. I went through that process and yeah, here we are. You did, you did say you go, you, you, you attended Harvard, right? Yes, I did. That that's one of the that's one of the top universities um in the US, right? Uh yes. <laughs> <laughs> it amazes me because you seem to be a brilliant young um lady. Oh, Why okay. choose football when um you could, you know, be be be, be some CEO in some top firms or whatever, uh, running your own business and so forth. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. You know, as well I... as what you studied at Harvard sure so i guess i'll start with what i studied uh, i always thought i was going to be a big chemist but you know when you go to the one of the top universities in the world and you're with all these brilliant minds it gets a little competitive and i realized like okay <laughs> maybe this is not what i want to do mostly because i'm very i'm a very competitive person and i think i often like stuff that i'm good at and once i got to college and i was with all these other brilliant people and I wasn't as good at it anymore. I realized that I didn't have the passion for it. It was more that I excelled and I liked it. So um, I kind of switched gears and I got into psychology because I love people. I love how the brain works and I love how people interact and, and develop. And so um, I studied that for four years. Uh, a branch called cognitive uh, neuroscience, which is kind of like the bridge between psychology and neurobiology, I like to say. So not too sciencey and then it's like right in between that super sweet spot that I like. And yeah, I studied that for four years, but the main um, career path after studying that is you can go to graduate school and then become kind of like a, a researcher, or you can then go to be uh, a psychiatrist and go to medical school and all of that. And I think, you know, those are very general, but those are kind of the two areas that were big. And I think, at the time, I just wasn't ready for that. I kind of wanted to go into nonprofit work because that's something that also is close to my heart, working with children and giving back. And then when I started to get healthy after my injury and I saw the reggae girls qualified, I was like, oh my gosh, this might be a great opportunity to me to, for me to come back. And I told you I wasn't very satisfied with my senior season, so I felt like I needed to accomplish something before I was hired. And so I thought, you know, obviously I have a life ahead of me to hopefully <laughs> to pursue something and it would be great to be a CEO or to continue my studies, but my legs won't last another 20 years. I pray that my brain will. So right now let's kind of pursue my passion and do something that I can do for now. And then when I'm ready to hang up the boots, I can continue my, my career after that. So, yeah. Okay, that's cool. And um, you, 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 so you were rooting for the reggae girls when they qualified. Oh, of course. Come on. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe when I think they, was it, they upset Costa Rica, right? I know mm. both Panama and, and uh, Jamaica upset. So I was like, what? They upset them and they upset. And it was just, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. So, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, cool. So, no, 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 you were drafted into the Cena team yes um you you, you made your, your your debut against was it Grenada Grenada right yes and you scored a peach of a goal <laughs> that that doesn't seem like a defender you know that oh. one doesn't seem like you're <laughs> any defender you know <laughs> oh, talk to us about getting back into the well coming um to meet up with these girls what was the vibe like and, and talk to us about the feeling of scoring that stunning uh, goal. Thank you, Coach. Um, it was amazing. You know, I, I definitely had a lot of anxiety going into camp because it had been so long since my last senior camp and just being in Jamaica in general. So uh, I was a little nervous. But when I came back, you know, I think the first person I saw, I saw Dom and I saw Chinny. And they came and gave me a hug. I also met Maria at the airport, but I didn't know her. So we kind of got to know each other um, while we were waiting for the, the bus to pick us up. But I had a lot of familiar faces. You know, I had been with the national team for several years. So over my course, the course of those years, I, I knew a lot of players 
And it just felt a little weird. Like, I feel like I, for me, a lot of time has passed and for them too. And so much has happened since I had last been with the team. So I was a bit in my head about that, I think, just because it had been like so much time. But um, everyone was really friendly. They were like, welcome back. Congrats on getting the call up again. And let's get to work, you know? So when I finally got my debut against Grenada, I, I was surprised that, that he called me because I wasn't really expecting to play. <laughs> but he called me and was like, okay, let's go. Get get my, my legs ready. And um, I don't know, scoring the goal, I, I couldn't believe when it left my foot, it felt right. And then when I just saw it go over, I was like, that, oh man, I just had to praise God there because I feel like he helped lift it over. I just couldn't believe that I, I, I cracked that. So it was a huge blessing and Trudy was right next to me. So, and we played on Gintra the last year together. So it was really great to celebrate with her, the first person. And I I just was smiling the whole way home. Like I couldn't believe that that had happened. But yeah, just, just very, very blessed and fortunate because I almost didn't come to camp. So the fact that I got to come and um, I had the opportunity to score a goal and play, I just, I was really happy. <laughs> okay, great. And uh, we congratulate you on that very, very <laughs> well taken goal as well. Thank All you. right. So in terms of the team, um, do you think we have all what it takes to, you know, get on top of the group by defeating a uh, uh, Dominica Republic, which many persons are talking up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just coming back into camp after so long, I, I see the development and we have a lot of women on the team with experience and I could see the growth in that time. So for us, I really just think we need to gel and uh, kind of sort out our system, sort out how we want to play. But we, we have the tools. We're Jamaicans look fast, you know, we have the speed, we have the tools, and we just need that time and that chemistry. And I think we need, um, honestly, more time than, than we're probably given with camps. So, but I, I don't have a doubt in my mind that we can do what we're supposed to do and, and qualify for the next round. So. Um, and qualifying for the next round, you, 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 you see in the team going all the way. Yeah, I do. Qualifying for the World Cup. I do. I do. I have all faith in this team. I really do. We're given the right tools and we have the right opportunity and we're feeling good. I, I really think that it's possible. So. Um, many of the fans are saying, uh, based on watching those games uh, the other day, that the defensive section of the team seem a little bit fragile. I think uh, Coach Vin alluded to that as well. Um, do you do you share the same the, the, the same sentiments where uh, the defense being that you're one of the defenders? Sure. You know, I think um, that's a tough question. I, for me personally, I was mostly just excited to get called back and kind of observe everything that was happening. And based off of, I don't know what the previous camps looked like, but I think we didn't really have a lot of time to gel defensively. So I think that was more the problem than anything, just getting to know each other, familiarizing ourselves with how we're going to play and the direction we want to play. So I know that, you know, I love our back line. I think we're solid, but I just think we need more time. That's the thing I will preach to the end. And if you put any four players together and they don't really have the time to get together, it's not going to come off the way that it should. So I think if we have a little bit more practice defensively, because we're mostly focused right now on scoring goals, which is also important. But there are moments where some teams will get a quick counterattack. And if we don't have the correct way to defend this or any sort of shape or organization, then that's going to be hard to defend. So for me, I'm not too concerned, uh, but I just, we need time. I will, I will keep saying that. That's, okay, that's a good great. Thing, so. All right. So in terms of um, Alika, the, you made mention of time and you need the chemistry to go and you, so obviously you're saying that playing time is important for the team so that yes. the chemistry and the gelling can take place Absolutely. um so let me ask you this as a footballer do you believe that bringing team uh players from all around and not getting them together to play games is that team it doesn't matter the quality that they are they will still do well or they will have issues At the end of the day, we're all footballers. So you would think that if you put 
a bunch of players who are quality on the field that they can figure it out. But there is something to be said about knowing this player likes on her right foot or her left foot, or this player is going to be attacking, so I need to fall back. So if you put a bunch of players who are quality together and they don't know how the other person works, I think it's going to look a little bit confusing until there's enough time to, to learn how the other players work. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, yeah, you can have the best players in the world and it will still probably come off okay. But to get us working at our maximum potential, Optimum, right. we, need, we need that chemistry. And so for me, I... I would love it if, I don't think it's possible, but I would love it if we had friendly games in between these rounds or maybe even a few extra days before the games to actually like have some scrimmage, have some, some shape work to get to know each other and, and really figure out what we're going to do. So, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, you're a professional player. I want you to tell the, the, the fans out there, uh, which team do you play for presently? Yes. And uh, what, what is your team like? How is the team doing and so forth? Okay, so I recently signed with Eto Gior, which is the same team that Tiffany Cameron is on. And mm -hmm. we are in Hungary, and Gior is the city, so west, pretty much halfway between Vienna and Budapest. And um, we are in second place right now, and the top two teams go to uh, like a three game playoff, um, and the best of two will go to Champions League. Right, so, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yes, so uh, we start our season officially tomorrow, but we had like a cup game, was it Wednesday or Thursday? And it went well, so we, we definitely have some things to work on, but I really feel confident and optimistic about the season. And, you know, the same thing that I'm saying with Jamaica, I just kind of got thrown into the mix, but now that we've had, I've had four games with these girls, so I'm feeling more confident. I know how my other center back works, I know how my left back works, and and how the central midfield moves. So we're starting to come together as a well-oiled machine. And that's the type of stuff that I'd love to see with the regular girls as well. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how the season goes. Okay, great. And you're a starting player, right? Yes. All right. And also big up to Tiffany Cameron. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, such a great She's player good. as well. Yes. Uh, what's the proudest moment in football? Whether it be the national team, your early years of playing football up to college, Man, you know, I think the first thing that pops into my head is actually high school football. My senior year, uh, I had a freshman on the team. Um, her name was her nickname was Pete, and she had told me, you know, at some point in the season that she wanted to practice her her strikes and her form. So. Not every day, but probably a few times a week, I would stay with her and a couple other girls on the team and we would practice like crosses and how to finish that and just the contact and the connection with the ball. And in one of the games uh, in our playoffs, like for the end of the season, there was a play where uh, my, I actually used to play striker, uh, fun fact. <laughs> so I was up top in this game and my central back hit it up to me. I took a touch out wide I sprinted down the field and I said, Pete, and she was right there with me. And I hit the cross and one touch, she hit it upper 90. And that was her first goal. And I was like so proud of her because it's the same thing that we had worked on the entire time in training. And it, I was just so proud of her because she put in the work and you could see her progress throughout the year. So that was probably one of my favorite moments in football. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you gave yourself away with that fun fact. No, I understand the ah, well, I hit it. That ball <laughs> okay. so ferociously <laughs> against Grenada. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Because you were indeed a striker. Yeah, man, that was a beautiful goal. It's oh. gonna be uh, one of the goals that will be talked about for a long time. Oh, wow. Now, <laughs> let's backtrack a little bit in terms of women in football. You know, United States team, female team would have broken the barrier uh, of. of been equal in terms of the men mm, yeah. in terns of yes. the remuneration uh salary and all of that so i want you yes. to chime in just a little bit on that aspect of football do you think that the females deserve equal pay with the male um footballers and so forth do they really generate the hype in the football as the men to get the same mm. pay for me i think that you get your return on your investment so 
If you put money into something, money will also come out of it. If you put money into the Reggae Girls and you really grow this program, you're going to see the return. We're going to be better. We're going to do more sales on jerseys and, and create hype. And it's the same thing with the women. Actually, the U.S. have had more success with this and more time, but they invest heavily into that program. And you can see many people in the U.S. talk about, oh, I don't care about the men's team. I just, I just pay attention to the women. But they have the investment to help them grow and help them be confident and only focus on football. So for me, that's that's the big thing. We do deserve it. I know some people will say, well, they're not selling enough. They're not doing this enough. We'll put a little bit of investment up front. You know, when you invest into your 401k or your Roth or whatever, you don't know that you're going to get that money back. It's a little bit of a gamble. So it's the same thing with sports, right? Put a little bit of money in and you're going to see it, it come out. Even with the Reggae Girls, how we qualified for the first World Cup, that was just a little bit of investment a little bit of time a lot of time honestly from the coaches and the coaching staff but you saw that turn around so it's the same thing honestly for women's sports i really think that with more time more money and investment into women you're going to see it, it turn around soon and, yeah. okay great all right um you're close to 30 now yeah um, there... <laughs> you had to say that didn't you <laughs> <laughs> no i not not really I, 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 I'm just using it to segue to this question in terms of uh, where are you in terms of your career? What, what, what are your plans um, for the next five years? Where do you see your football career? Do you plan to retire early or you have to make some more moves in terms of solidify your name in, 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 in world football? Sure. Solidifying my name isn't too important for me. I just want to feel like... I am making a difference on the teams that I'm on. And so, you know, when I was a little bit younger, I had said the last World Cup would be kind of where I wanted to end. And then, you know, I would start my careers and, and jump into other things. But obviously it didn't work out that way. So God had other plans and that's okay. But I still feel that hunger, that need to, to accomplish something, that need to, I don't know, feel like I'm ending my career on a high. So. I think the next five years, I would love to see myself in probably Western Europe, like a, a Spain or an Italy. Um, obviously, it kind of depends where God's leading me, but I want to play in those environments where I'm kind of moving the ball more as a central back and, and feeling like I'm growing technically, tactically, and I'm not there yet, I don't think. So I want a little bit more time to kind of develop that. I would love the opportunity to stay with the Reggae Girls and hopefully go to another World Cup. I would love an opportunity to, to do the same with the Olympics. So I'm kind of just taking it day by day. But just kind of what feels right and whatever that has in turn. And my eyes are open to that and my heart's open to that. Okay, great. And um, just, 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 just to get it a little bit on the softer side, in terms of your favorite footballer, um, who is your favorite footballer? Oh no, I'm gonna reveal myself a little bit here. <laughs> I don't really support that sounds so bad. Uh, a lot of teams, so I'm gonna go cheesy and say Messi because he has incredible feet and I love the way that he moves. Know that you said that. I want to know which club do you support? Oh, I EPL. Just... <laughs> or if it's Spanish or a Bundesliga, you got to tell us. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I feel like I, when I was watching heavily, I was more supporting Tottenham. So, Tottenham. Yeah. Is that a bad answer? Oh, no. No, not a bad answer, but I, I <laughs> hope, since you did not say Manchester United, I'll work with Tottenham. Okay. Once okay, it's good. none of the other rivals, I'm okay with that. All right, good. I'm glad I'm still on the same side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In terms of um, playing for the reggae girls now, is there a goal that you have personally or is it their uh, team goal that you have Today. Um, whenever you're called up? Um, what, what, what's, what, what's that? Personally, my goals with reggae girls, you said? Say that again. You said, sorry, I you broke up a little bit. You said, "Do I have a personal goal?" With the oh, sorry about that. Yes, I'm. I'm saying, what do you have any personal goals for the team 
oh. in terms of each time you get called up um or is it a, a team goal that you, you 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 have rather than a personal goal but i would suspect that you have personal goals whenever you're called up sure. to play with the team so would you uh be kind enough to share that goal to us uh with us you know it's for me, to be honest, Coach Lindsay, I feel like I, I'm still finding my way back to the team. So I'm not taking anything for granted and I'm not expecting to get called up. So even just getting called up for me is, is a personal goal. But when I get called up, if I happen to get on the field, shutouts, that's the big thing that every defender wants. They don't want to get turned. They don't want to have any <laughs> any sort of goals on their on their resume. You know, you want that perfect uh, – perfect statistic so but for me personally i have wanted to develop the long part of my game a bit more uh i'm very much like a short sided i like to play i like to get the ball back which isn't super a, a central defender um that's what i'm looking for uh characteristic so i need to get my head up more and sometimes look for those quick long balls because we have the athleticism to get behind and I don't often do that. So that's something that I'm really trying to develop here with Fior. And that's something that I want to look for with the Reggae Girls as well. Because if we have it open and we got Bunny or Trudy or Jody or any forward that's super fast, that's ready to break that space or Tiffany, I want to hit that. And thankfully, we'll have some time to work on that on this team because we're going to be playing a lot together. So I'm excited to, to tease that out. Okay, that's great. All right. Um any uh we're 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 currently out of time right now okay. um so uh we just want to ask you to share is there any thoughts that you'd like to share with uh young jamaican footballers wherever they are in the world um what they need to do the probably trajectory that they should take you know probably one size doesn't fit all but as sure. best as possible to, you know, share with yeah. the audience how they can be disciplined or whatever to to, to, to be a successful uh, player. Well, some words that I heard recently that I love is stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So stay consistent. Even if you're tired in the morning, wake up, do that run. Even if it's not as fast as you had done previously, the fact that you're doing it will bring you a step closer to your goals. And that's something that I also need to practice a lot because sometimes it's hard to be like, well, oh, you know, man, I really, this leg is hurting or this something, just go out and do it. A little bit a day will start to become habit and you won't even think about it. It's just a routine. So, and obviously for my young students, stay in school, stay consistent, you know, do your work and obviously everything will fall into place all right well said people there you have it alika keen reggae girl defender a member of the cena team and she would have played through the ranks it's indeed a privilege for us to have her here on the coach's desk we hope to see her back <laughs> in the national team because you know when we when we when we interview these ladies you know we try as best as possible we go at the game to try and meet up in person so oh, we had a few, okay. yes we had a few ladies on like sashana um trudy and yeah. so forth and when we and and um what, what's her name again the goalkeeper uh jasmine okay yes yeah. and when we went to the match we ensured that you know yeah we, that's you we introduced ourselves so okay. i'm definitely looking forward to seeing you if you're called up when whenever you're called up definitely yeah. we'll uh, try to connect that. there definitely so, yeah yeah man that's cool so again thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule <laughs> and i want you to convey uh greetings from us to tiffany tell her that yes, uh, we're, yeah. we're supporting her yeah. and we look forward to have uh you guys you ladies sorry in the next round so that we can get the yes. job done and move on to the next round so again, Absolutely. people, it's a privilege again. And uh, is there anyone you want to shout out before you leave, Alika? A lot of people watch this show. Um, oh. You can tell the folks where we can um, follow you on social media because, trust me, 
the reggae boys fans, the reggae girls fans, mm -hmm. they like to be abreast of what is happening with the with the players. Oh wow, okay. Right. So um, you need to, if you have any social media handle, just let them know where they can find you. And if you sure. want to shout out anyone, you can do that before you leave. Uh just I guess shout out to my uh my family, my friends who have supported me and kept me focused and encouraged. Um, Mom, Dad, Fiona, Wade, uh, best friends, Brooke, Paulina. Just thank you for your endless support and love. And um, yeah, I appreciate you. And um, my Instagram is at Alika Keen. I think that's everything. That's right. <laughs> that's the only one that you use. <laughs> My, you know, I'm so bad with social media, to be honest with you. I'm very inconsistent. But yeah, I also use Facebook, but it's, you know, for, I think my friends. <laughs> so I don't know if people can follow me there. But yeah, okay. social, so Instagram is pretty much the main, the main one that I have. Okay. I have so, yeah. All right. All the best in your season opener, Alika. We Thank hope you. that you score some more peach. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> We'll put that out there and hope that it happens. So Yes, definitely. So enjoy the rest of your day. Get some rest. And, uh, you know, as a professional, you know what to do. Yeah. Until next time, stay safe. Thank, Thank you. you for tuning in, Thank people. You for really. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, until next time, people, definitely. We appreciate you stopping by to show us some support. Peace out.